And rolling right along, here we are with segment 9 of Introduction to Verdax. In the last session, we talked about using polyglot programming with Verdax, where we can have multiple languages for Verdax. In this session, we're going to step back a little bit and talk about how Verdax applications are launched, at least pure Verdax applications. We discussed in the first segment this Vertex Maven plugin and some of the special things that it does are it packages our jar file as an executable jar file overriding the default Maven jar packaging but it also does one other thing that isn't obvious from this is it sets the main class for that executable jar to be something called launcher which is part of Vertex core and that launcher provides us with some additional capabilities. What you may not have noticed is that when we generated our application and we specified that main vertical, we set this property in our Maven file. And the Vertex Maven plugin uses this property to tell the launcher which class is going to be the initially loaded vertical. And when we use this, to create that executable jar file, we get some additional capabilities in that executable jar. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Java-jar target vertex example. And we can say dash dash help. And you'll see that because it's executing that launcher, launcher knows about certain commands that the launcher can handle. And more important to our discussion is the vertex run command. And if we do run dash dash help, we see that we can pass in a lot of different options or parameters when we start our application. Uh, we showed when we were doing InfiniSpan clustering that we use that cluster option and the cluster host option. Uh, we can also pass in an initial configuration for our Vertex application, either as a JSON string or a JSON file. Uh, we can enable high availability and quorums. We can tell it how many instances of a vertical to run. We can set up redeployment options. All of that can be defined right here in the launcher parameters. So going back to our previous talks about the configuration management, we can add another config store. So let's do that, config store options. And we'll call this one CLI config. And in the CLI config, we'll set the type to JSON and set the config to be that CLI config. When a vertex vertical is loaded by the runtime, it initializes that vertical with certain information. And when it's initialized by the launcher, any command line config is going to be available in the config method as a JSON object. This is a method inherited from abstract vertical, so we don't even really need to think about it. Now that we've defined that config, we can add that store to our config retriever options. And again, reiterating, the order of these is important. The first item is going to have the lowest preference for its settings, and the last item will have the highest preference for its settings. So in default config, we know that we've defined the HTTP port to port 8080. Now in the CLI config, if we override that HTTP port, the settings in the latter item will take precedence over the settings in the earlier item. So let's create that config that we're going to try to load by doing touch test config.json. We now have our test config and we can fill in some configuration. Uh, HTTP port 9080. And we know from previous that once we load this configuration we call this config uh, handle config results. Uh, handle config results uses that configuration 
to start up our HTTP server on the appropriate port. So the configuration we get from the default config versus the configuration we get from the command line config will be different. And we can prove that maven clean package. And we can launch our application java-jar target vertex and it starts up and if we look at netstat dash plant grep 8080 we'll see that our java application is listening on port 8080 now if we switch back over here and restart this application using the run conf test config and because we're overriding the startup options we have to specify that main vertical again so we have to put com red hat demo main vertical and restart the application and if we switch back over to here we see it's no longer running on port 8080 it's running on port 9080 as we specified in our test config that's a quick and easy overview of how to pass configuration on the command line to a vertex fat jar. I hope that's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you in future videos on this series.